The Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, and the Chinese Ambassador Lang Hu met to review the joint agenda and the challenges the countries are facing. In Russia, authorities have reported a new drone at attack by Ukrainian troops on the outskirts of the Saporizhia nuclear plant. And the Palestinian resistance movement Hamas accused Israel of frustrating negotiations for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos. I'm from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. On Friday, the Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, and Chinese Ambassador Lang Hu met to review the joint agenda and the challenges the countries are facing. According to the Executive Office, the development of joint relations has been reviewed and the bonds of friendship have been strengthened. The representatives of Caracas and Beijing examined recent agreements signed after the implementation of the special economic zones in the Bolivarian nation that will be destined to key sectors such as energy, agriculture and technology. In recently published figures, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Venezuela put the commercial exchange with the Asian nation at $4,183 million. And we continue in Venezuela as we go live to Caracas images right now where demonstrations are taking place in the country as citizens are showing their support for the re-elected president. In Caracas currently mobilizations are taking place as the citizens. Let's see the live images right now. The demonstrations that are taking place in Caracas have to do with showing the support to the re-elected president after the context that have been, has been going through after the elections of July 28th. We are now seeing live images from Caracas. We can see that the citizens are demonstrating. This is one of the demonstrations that have been taking place since the elections that took place on July 28th and the series of events that happened afterwards, including the denunciations made by the government of violent acts allegedly supported and enforced by right-wing groups. This has been denounced by the government, also investigated by the general prosecutor of the country. And also in the past days, the president filed a contentious appeal before the Supreme Court of the country that began an investigation, a thorough investigation into the electoral process. In this context, with the tribunal, the Supreme Tribunal of the country already in place and already in charge of this investigation that we saw hearings being held, summoning all the candidates to the, um, all the candidates, that former candidates for the elections before the court to present all the material investigation. Now that the in material is being investigated by the Supreme Court authorities in this context, we see that demonstrations and support for the legitimately elected government and also for the respect of Venezuelan sovereignty and the respect of the decision that the Venezuelan people have made is still being shown in the streets. And in this context, we continue live in Caracas as our, as our correspondent Gladys Quesada joins us with the latest. Hello, Gladys. It's great to have you here with us. And tell us what is the latest over there in Venezuela. 
Hi, Belen. Precisely, I'm here in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela. Precisely, right now, I'm at Miranda District. This is one of the main parts that conform uh, the district capital uh, of uh, Venezuela and the city of Caracas. Right now, we have underway one uh, march. Is a way to say that there is a demonstration of motor bikers, and I have to stop here to explain that uh, the motor bikers here is or are a great large sector of the population most of the uh, popular sectors you know the uh, working class here in Caracas and they have been supporting President Nicolas Maduro Moros since uh, the campaign times the campaign period ahead of the July 28th presidential elections during the elections and they are also showing their support their backing of the government and their backing for the results of those elections of those polls and they are uh, the first doing the rallies today in support of the presidency in support of the re-election of President Nicolas Maduro Moros but so far today we will have other activities and there is expected a large march here in Caracas, in downtown Caracas, in the center popular zones, precisely and uh, with more accuracy, and the avenue of Urdaneta in Andres Bello sector, and also the march is expected to start in the Libertador Avenue uh, in the Can TV, which is the um, company for telecommunications and telephone communications here in Venezuela. Also, as uh, the president was announcing, uh, this uh, march is supposed or is expected to gather uh, people in 100 cities of Venezuela, also in 100 uh, marches all over Venezuela. So this is not just concentrated here in Caracas, it's also a showing of support nationwide. Also, we have other information and that is the, the march is expected to go through the center of Caracas, downtown Caracas, as we were saying, in the Bellas Artes sector, which is uh, the name that receives uh, uh, because of the fine arts gallery the national gallery that is next uh, to this uh, zone and it is heading Miraflores Palace the seat of the government as is customary is traditional here in Caracas for people to go march through all the central parts of the city and then uh, meet up the president and the top leaders of the Bolivarian revolution there in the Miraflores Palace for a gathering and him to give and offer a speech. Also, uh, it is uh, known that the opposition uh, groups, the opposition organizations also convoked and called for a march today. Uh, August 17th and uh, this march that the Chavismo forces and the Chavismo uh, grassroots organizations are holding is a way to respond, to contest, to counteract those marches because uh, there are uh, other informations and those were delivered by Diosdado Cabello, the first vice president of the Socialist United Party of Venezuela, that there were schemes of violence to be held today to be uh, taken into action today by the opposition and the extreme far-right groups here in Caracas. So the people is going to the streets to defend peace and to defend also their stability in the nation. And also, as I was saying, to back, to give their backing and their support to the results of the July 28th presidential elections and the government of the re-elected president, Nicolás Maduro Moros. That is the information so far. Today, uh, the marches are going to take over 100 cities, I was saying that and we will be there with the start of the march, the start of the rally, and we will be giving you more information. So far, this is just the, you know, the time ahead of the march, and as I was saying, the pedestrian march, you know, the people by their foot, they are, will be going out uh, in the afternoon time. So far, this is the information. Belen, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Gladys, for all the report and also the updates regarding the current situation in Venezuela. We will come back to you throughout the day to follow the latest in the South American country. That was Gladys Quesada, Telesur correspondent in Venezuela. And also, for more on the country, the President Nicolás Maduro led the working meeting for the communal consultation to be held on August 25th to strengthen democracy and national sovereignty. From the Miraflores Palace, the president informed that next August 25th, popular elections will be held in the country in more than 4,505 communal circuits that include and group together more than 49,000 communal councils. In this sense, the Venezuelan head of state reiterated that with the plan of the homeland, a new district 
a new direct socialist democratic phase will start where the people will have the option to elect without interventionist attempts of foreign nations. Also, the President Nicolas Maduro assured that the United States wants to interfere in Venezuela's internal affairs when it is not capable of solving its own social and political problems. And more on Venezuela, the President Nicolas Maduro denounced that the government of Argentina, led by Javier Milei, financed with public funds a series of massive cyber attacks against the country. The Venezuelan president denounced cyber attacks against institutions of the country where 106 state digital portals have been affected during the last week. Maduro said that Argentina, Spain and Mexico used programmer forms to threaten political leaders, artists, athletes, personalities and influencers. The head of state denounced that the Argentine government through the Secretariat of State Intelligence spent the equivalent to $100 million to attack with computer programs the Bolivarian Revolution. And also in Venezuela, President Maduro led a meeting with Christian leaders in the framework of peace building in the country. The meeting took place in the Miraflores Palace in the Boyaca Hall, where different Christian leaders shared prayers and exhorted the Venezuelan population to make petitions and prayers, as well as sessions of grace for the country to achieve peace and holiness. On his hand, the Venezuelan head of state assured that times of prosperity await Venezuela. He also expressed that the Venezuelan executive is working hard to restore peace and security for all Venezuelan families. Now let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English where you will find news in different formats, news updates and much more. We'll be right back, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. In Colombia, delegates from the nine countries that make up the indigenous people of the Amazon Basin met in the capital to establish criteria and commitments to protect biodiversity in their territories and communities in preparation to the UN Climate Change Conference to be held in Cali. Our correspondent Hernán Tobar has the details. Let's see. In the capital Colombiana, los pueblos indígenas pertenecían... In the Colombian capital, the indigenous people belonging to the Amazon Basin held the first international meeting of native people on the road to CBD. Nine delegates from the countries that make up this region and their representatives from Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador, Bolivia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname and Peru, as well as state entities from the host country, were present. We talk about the expansion of indigenous reserves, that legal security to maintain the balance of nature. There are some very important issues of direct funding for indigenous people who care for and protect the territory to be able to talk about biodiversity at the national, international and global level. There are some bets that's going to order to protect the territory protect the environment and protect biodiversity. El territorio, proteger el medio ambiente, proteger eh, la biodiversidad. Los pueblos indígenas son clave para la protección. Native people are key to the protection of biodiversity and the fight to combat climate change and preserve the ecological balance in the plant. The Amazon basin alone is home to more than 500 indigenous people who are in permanent struggle for the preservation of the so-called lungs of the world which is why it is necessary for them to be heard and participate in social, ecological and climate policies. For us, my people and other peoples of the Amazon, we are aware of our contributions, but many times the states and the governments do not recognize these types of contributions, that for millennia, with our knowledge, our connectivity with Mother Earth, with nature, we have contributed and that is one of the strong demands of these great dialogues at the global level. But we must never lose sight of the right to life, human rights. The rights of indigenous people are not negotiable. Spaces such as these serve to promote environmental protection policies, 
They also serve to reflect on the conditions of indigenous people, historical victims of violence and colonialism. Colonialism still exists, but in another form. It is now the transnational companies that have many important resources and are installed in a territory from one day to another and already have the legal security that the peoples have been demanding for more than 20 years. A situation so complicated and difficult, but also we indigenous people have always said we are not against the development of private companies as long as they respect the collective rights of indigenous people. Representative of the native people of the Amazon Basin signed an agreement that will be taken to the largest biodiversity conference, CBD COP16, to be held next October in Colombia, bringing their proposals for the protection and defense of the biodiverse territories and lungs of the world. Now we move on to other topics. In Russia, authorities have reported a new drone attack by Ukrainian troops on the outskirts of the Saporizhia nuclear power plant. According to the authorities of the plan, the attack was launched by the Ukrainian army around 7 in the morning local time this Saturday on the road that passes next to the reactors of the plant, represented, representing a threat to security. This is the route through which the staff moves constantly. However, the attack left no dead or wounded. The latest incident against the nuclear power plant located in eastern Ukraine took place on August 11th when Ukrainian forces attacked a cooling tower with two drones causing a fire. And earlier, the Russian government had warned that it would give a response if Ukraine carried out nuclear provocation. Throughout the statement, the Russian Defense Ministry reported that it was evaluating information released by independent channels on the preparation of the Ukrainian regime to attack the nuclear power plants of Kursk and Saporizhia. They also denounced that the objective of this provocation was to accuse Moscow of self-attack on its plants in order to create reasons for attacking nuclear facilities in Ukraine. The security agency condemns such plans and stated that they constitute a direct violation of the International Convention on Combating Acts of Nuclear Terrorism. And also in this context, Russian Defense Ministry reported on a massive surrender of Ukrainian military in Kursk province after operations thwarted by Moscow. According to a spokesman for the Russian security agency, several Ukrainian settlements in Kursk have been evicted since Thursday, August 15th. The Ministry of Defense also reported that Russian forces continue to conduct military operations in the area with a view to advancing the recovery of the region and taking prisoners. The Ukrainian army launched a surprise offensive against the Kursk region on August 6th, killing at least 12 civilians and wounding more than 120 people including 10 children. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Tell Us for English, where you will find news, rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. The Palestinian resistance movement Hamas accused Israel of frustrating negotiations for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Hamas political bureau member Ghazi Hamad stated that despite the efforts of the mediators, conciliation was not achieved on any point of the proposal. Explain, he also explained that the resistance will not accept any agreement without a full ceasefire withdrawal of occupation from Gaza. The return of displaced people and an agreement on prisoner exchanges were also points of the alleged agreement. 
Hamad believes that even if new conditions are established, Tel Aviv will continue its siege against Palestine. And while this is going on, massacres by the genocidal Israeli troops continue in Gaza. At least 15 people were killed in the Sawaida refugee camp. The Zionist group bombed tents full of people, most of them hungry and thirsty women and children. The Israeli fighter planes launched three attacks in the surroundings of the camps with the Palestinians that were, had been displaced there and with the promise of the area being a safe place. These attacks in the center of Gaza, in addition to new orders for massive evacuations in the north and south of the Palestinian settlement, are taking place while the, the international community is concentrating its hopes on a ceasefire. And recent reports reveal that Israeli settlers and military have set at least 273 fires on Palestinian property in the occupied West Bank since October 2023. The resistance committee to the war and settlement issued a statement in which it detailed that since the outbreak of the new cycle of violence on October 7th last year, some 120 fires were caused in the governorate of Nablus, 42 in Ramallah and 26 in Yenin. Of the total, 77 affected lands and crops, while 196 burned public or private property, including apartments, buildings and vehicles. The committee denounced that the Israeli occupation authorities sponsored these actions with the aim of terrorizing and intimidating the population in order to cause forced displacement. And we go now to other topics. In Canada, fast-moving wildfires have devastated the town of Jasper in Alberta, destroying 30% to 50% of the town and prompting the evacuation of about 25,000 residents. By late July 2024, officials reported that approximately 358 out of the 1,113 structures were lost, including the Maling Lodge Hotel. The fires, described as a wall of fire, have also impacted Jasper National Park, with around 140 square miles affected. Alberta's Premier Daniel Smith noted the need for significant reconstruction efforts and expressed deep sorrow over the community's loss. Firefighting efforts are ongoing with support from international crews as conditions remain challenging due to heat and dryness. And like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at salisoenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and also on TikTok. For Salisoenglish, my name is Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.